Welcome to our channel. Listen to short audiobooks every day and improve yourself. Judith Butler. Who's afraid of gender? Gender. It's a simple word that carries immense weight, shaping our lives, our relationships, and our world in ways both subtle and profound. But as the renowned theorist Judith Butler reveals, gender has also become a battleground, a site of intense political and social conflict. This explores the complexities of gender identity, from the experiences of those who identify as trans, non-binary, gender fluid or agender, to the rigid norms and expectations that affect us all. The author challenges you to question your assumptions around the concept of nature or nurture, and to consider how fears and anxieties around gender are being mobilized in the current moment. You'll learn about the disturbing links between the current backlash against gender diversity and the rise of authoritarianism. From the MAGA movement on the right, to exclusionary feminists on the left, to conservative religious movements around the globe, Butler traces the ways in which fears and anxieties around gender are being weaponized by those seeking to consolidate power and roll back hard-won civil rights. So come along on this exploration of the idea of gender itself and discover why the conversation is more urgent and vital than ever before. Gender as a Battleground Across the globe, gender has become a flashpoint of political and social conflict. It's cast as a danger to children, a threat to national security, and an attack on the very foundations of society. In the eyes of its opponents, gender diversity is nothing less than a plot by elites to impose their cultural values on everyone else, a scheme for colonizing the global south by the urban centers of the global north. The Catholic Church, under the leadership of Pope Francis, has been a vocal opponent of what it calls gender ideology. In his rhetoric, the teaching of gender theory is portrayed as a danger on par with nuclear weapons, a force that threatens the very existence of humanity. This view is echoed by conservative religious movements around the world, which see gender diversity as a direct challenge to their beliefs and ways of life. In the United States, the rise of the MAGA movement and the shaping of the Supreme Court by the former Trump administration has given new power to these efforts. Policies such as the military's ban on transgender individuals are seen as necessary steps to protect traditional gender norms and roll back the rights of LGBTQ plus people. At its core, the fierce resistance to gender diversity is rooted in a web of oppressive systems that seek to maintain their power and dominance. The gender binary, with its rigid roles and expectations, serves as a key tool for upholding patriarchy, white supremacy and the power of colonialism. By enforcing a narrow, essentialist view of gender, these systems are able to keep marginalized groups in their place and preserve the status quo. For those who benefit from these hierarchies, the idea of gender diversity poses a fundamental threat. It challenges the very foundations upon which their power is built, exposing the ways in which gender has been used as a means of control and oppression. In a world where gender is fluid and multifaceted, the patriarchal order begins to crumble and the colonial project loses its legitimacy. The opposition to gender diversity is deeply intertwined with the interests of capitalism as well. Traditional gender norms have long been used to shape the workforce in ways that maximize profit and productivity. Think about feminist messages like that of Rosie the Riveter, promoting women to factory jobs when the male workforce shrank, only to switch to traditional homemaker messages when men return to the workforce. And this was just in the last century. The narrow, essentialist view of gender as binary is not only misguided, but also deeply harmful. It erases the experiences of those who do not fit neatly into either category, and it perpetuates a system of oppression and inequality that affects everyone. Ironically, by denying the complexity and diversity of human gender identity and expression, these conservative movements are waging a war on the very fabric of our humanity, in all its irregular, individual and unique glory. A false binary. The idea that gender is a simple binary, 
you can either be a man or you can be a woman, is deeply ingrained in Western society. It shapes language, institutions and social interactions in countless ways. But as Butler and other gender theorists have argued, this binary understanding of gender is not only overly simplistic, but also deeply harmful to those who do not fit into either category. The rise of trans-exclusionary radical feminists, or TERFs, has brought this issue to the forefront of the gender debate. TERFs, who often claim to be defending the rights of women, argue that gender is determined solely by biological sex and that trans women are not real women. They have pushed for policies that exclude trans people from women-only spaces and work to roll back legal protections for trans individuals. But this view of gender is deeply misguided. It relies on an essentialist understanding of biological sex as a binary and immutable category, ignoring the scientific evidence that sex is itself a complex and multidimensional phenomenon. By reducing gender to biology, gender purists erase the lived experiences of intersex people whose bodies do not fit into the male-female binary, as well as those who identify as non-binary, gender-fluid or agender. The controversy surrounding J.K. Rowling's views on gender is a case in point. In a series of tweets and essays, the beloved author of the Harry Potter series expressed support for turf ideology and argued that the push for trans rights is a threat to women and to girls. Her comments have sparked a fierce backlash from trans activists and allies who point out that Rowling's views are not only transphobic but also harmful to the millions of fans who have found solace and inspiration in her work. The idea that biology determines gender is not only scientifically inaccurate, but also historically and culturally specific. The very concept of biological sex as a binary is a relatively recent invention, one that is tied to the rise of both Western science and colonialism. Many indigenous and non-Western cultures have long recognized the existence of multiple genders and have developed complex systems for understanding and expressing gender diversity. At the heart of this debate is the question of who gets to define gender and who gets to be included in the category of woman. For gender purists, the answer is simple. Biology is destiny. But for Butler and other gender theorists, this view is not only narrow-minded but also oppressive. It denies the fundamental humanity of those who do not fit into the binary and perpetuates a system of gender-based violence and discrimination. To truly realize the transformative potential of gender diversity, we must also challenge the assumptions and biases that underlie the gender binary. Next, we'll explore the biological and cultural diversity of gender expression around the world and consider what we can learn from non-Western and indigenous perspectives. On the Spectrum the idea of gender as a simple binary is not only scientifically inaccurate, but also culturally specific. While the gender binary has become deeply entrenched in Western society, it is by no means universal. Across the world and throughout history, cultures have developed a wide range of ways of understanding and expressing gender, often recognizing the existence of multiple genders and celebrating gender diversity as a natural and valuable part of the human experience. One powerful example of this diversity can be found in the Hijra communities of South Asia. Hijras are individuals who are assigned male at birth but who identify as women or as a third gender. They have a long and rich history in the region with references appearing in ancient Hindu texts. Today, they continue to play an important role in South Asian society, often performing at weddings and other celebrations and serving as spiritual leaders and healers. Despite their cultural significance, hijras face significant discrimination and violence in contemporary South Asian society. They are often marginalized and stigmatized, facing difficulties in accessing education, employment and health care. Many are forced to turn to sex work or begging to survive, and they are frequently targeted for harassment and abuse by police and other authorities. But the existence of hijras challenges the notion that gender is determined solely by biology and highlights the ways in which gender is shaped by social and cultural factors. It also reminds us that the gender binary is a relatively recent invention, 
one that has been imposed on much of the world through the forces of colonialism and globalization. Indeed, many indigenous cultures around the world have long recognized the existence of multiple genders and have developed systems for understanding and expressing gender diversity. In North America, for example, many Native American cultures have traditionally recognized the existence of two-spirit individuals who embody both masculine and feminine qualities and often fill important spiritual and social roles in their communities. These examples are just a small sample of the vast diversity of gender expressions and identities that exist across cultures and historical periods. By studying and learning from these diverse perspectives, we can begin to develop a more nuanced and inclusive understanding of gender, one that moves beyond the narrow confines of the Western binary and celebrates the full spectrum of human experience. But this diversity is not limited to cultural and social factors. Even at the level of biology, the idea of a simple gender binary breaks down under closer scrutiny. In recent years, scientists have begun to uncover the complex and multidimensional nature of biological sex, revealing that even at the most fundamental level, the categories of male and female are not as clear-cut as once thought. Beyond Biology and Culture just as a more global and historic perspective sheds light on the rich diversity of gender and gender expression in humanity, so too do the lived experiences of those who fall outside the binary today. For those who identify as transgender, non-binary, gender fluid or agender, gender is not a fixed or static category, but rather a deeply personal and dynamic aspect of their identity. These individuals often describe a profound sense of disconnection or dissonance between their assigned gender and their internal sense of self, a feeling that can be both psychologically and emotionally taxing. Many trans and non-binary individuals face significant challenges in navigating a world that is often hostile to their very existence. From facing discrimination and violence to struggling to access appropriate health care and legal recognition, the daily realities of life outside the gender binary can be daunting and overwhelming. Yet despite these challenges, trans and non-binary individuals also often report a profound sense of joy and liberation in being able to express their true selves and live authentically. By rejecting the constraints of the gender binary and embracing the fluidity and diversity of their own identities, they are able to tap into a deep well of creativity, resilience and self-knowledge. This complexity and diversity of lived experience points to a fundamental insight of Butler's work, that gender is neither entirely natural nor entirely cultural, but rather a complex co-creation of many different factors. In other words, gender is not something that we are born with or that is imposed upon us by society, but rather something that we actively construct and perform through our interactions with the world around us. This view challenges the notion that gender is a fixed or essential aspect of human identity and instead highlights the ways in which gender is shaped by a wide range of social, cultural and political factors. It also underscores the importance of recognising and valuing the diversity of gender expressions and identities rather than trying to fit everyone into narrow and limiting categories. The implications of this view are profound, not only for our understanding of gender, but also for our broader conception of human identity and social justice. By recognising the complexity and diversity of gender, we can begin to move beyond the limitations of the binary system and create a more inclusive and equitable world for all. This is particularly important in the face of rising authoritarianism and the ongoing attacks on gender diversity and expression. As we have seen throughout this blink, the fight for gender justice is not only a matter of personal liberation, but also a crucial front in the broader struggle for human rights and democracy. Authenticity matters. Embracing gender diversity is not only a matter of personal liberation, but also a crucial step toward building a more just and equitable society. When cultures recognize and value the full spectrum of gender expressions and identities, they create an environment in which every individual is able to contribute their unique talents and perspectives.
regardless of their gender identity or expression. Imagine a young person named Alex, who has always felt a sense of discomfort with the gender they were assigned at birth. As Alex begins to explore their gender identity, they find themselves constantly confronted with binary expectations and limitations. This is especially true from their family, work colleagues, religious leaders, and even a few close friends. But then, Alex discovers a community of people who celebrate and affirm the full spectrum of gender diversity. With the support of this community, Alex is able to embrace their authentic self and live a life of greater joy and fulfillment, literally feeling comfortable in their own skin for the first time. Now, imagine a workplace where employees of all gender identities and expressions are valued and respected. In this workplace, people are able to bring their whole selves to their work without fear of discrimination or judgment. As a result, the workplace is more innovative, creative, and productive, benefiting not only the individuals who work there, but also the larger organization and society as a whole. Finally, embrace your own authenticity. Take the time to reflect on your own gender identity and expression and give yourself permission to explore and express your authentic self. Remember that there is no one right way to be a man, a woman, or any other gender identity. By embracing your own unique identity and expression, you can contribute to a world that celebrates the full spectrum of human diversity. The main takeaway from this Who's Afraid of Gender by Judith Butler is that gender is a complex and fluid aspect of human identity, shaped by a wide range of biological, social, and cultural factors and not a fixed or binary category. By understanding the rich diversity of gender identities and expressions that exist across cultures and throughout history, we can challenge our assumptions and develop a more inclusive approach to gender justice. However, it's crucial to recognize how gender is being weaponized by authoritarian movements to roll back hard-won rights and freedoms, and how gender oppression is deeply linked to other forms of systemic injustice. Ultimately, by embracing the full spectrum of gender diversity and working to create a world in which every individual is free to express their authentic self, we can all contribute to a more just and equitable society for all. Thank you.